We are following breaking news today. Two people are dead after a shooting at Dundas and Parliament. Here's a live look at the scene from the air. A shattered piece in Regent Park. A shooting has left two men dead and a woman in hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. I, I need to do it, but I have to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to do it, but I have to do it. Don't say a word. I'm, you, you, you personally come get it. I'm going to give it to you personally. Don't send no bitch. This is man-to-man -man shit. Nah, you think I'm fried? You know, I'm, I'm gonna smack the shit out of you. That's what I'm gonna do. I will blow you don't even you deserve up. to die, you bitch kid. Oh, you don't even deserve to die. Killed on Tuesday afternoon near Dundas and Parliament Streets, 23-year-old Benedict Johnson Congolo, the son and brother of the victims, is now facing two counts of first-degree murder in connection. Holy with shit! The this guy just shot the fucking guy. Welcome back. On today's episode of Tales of Toronto, we're covering one of the most gruesome stories the city has seen in recent years. It's a tale involving a rapper who, in an apparent manic episode, would commit a horrific act of familicide. But what makes the situation even more deranged is what he was posting on social media mere hours prior to carrying out the horrendous act. The tale begins here, in Regent Park. Within the heart of Toronto, Regent Park has long held a reputation that precedes it. Since the early 90s, the 69-acre block was characterized by gun and gang violence. Locals attributed the rising violence with cultural conflicts, while community leaders published a report in the mid-70s citing a lack of recreational facilities, bored youth, and socioeconomic factors as reasons for the neighborhood's increasing conflicts. It wouldn't be until 2003 when Toronto's City Council formally endorsed the blueprint for a revitalized Regent Park, with demolition beginning in 2006. Fast forward to 2024, Regent Park is almost unrecognizable. After being littered with freshly built condos, supermarkets, community centers, and coupled with reports indicating the once troubled neighborhood had zero gun-related homicides in all of 2023, Regent Park was finally making real progress. Sadly, mere weeks after the community celebrated the success of the $2.5 million revitalization plan, the two-decade-long progress would be stripped away by a local rapper. This is 23-year-old Benedict Johnson Congolo, better known by his rap name, Joe Easy. He's a Regent Park bred rapper, entering the city's niche rap scene in 2018 at just 17 years old. He showed great potential after featuring on his debut track, Call Back, alongside fellow Regent Parker, Lil Barrett. Although the catchy tune has since been deleted, the duo would continue their rise to rap prominence with the hit, No Makeup. Currently sitting at nearly 4 million views, this was just one of many songs that put Joe Easy and the new generation of Regent Park rappers on the map. The new gen dubbed themselves STN, an acronym for Southside to Northside. Backed by the likes of the melodic Lil Barrett, the energetic paperboy, and the lyrical underdog Acer, the future for STN was bright. After the release of No Makeup, the group carried their momentum into 2019 with songs like Boomerang, which is now sitting at more than half a million views, and Paperboy CP24, a remix of the hit single from rival Bleecker Street rapper Loco City. Joe Easy also dropped his first solo track this year, reaching an impressive 250,000 views. STN achieved numerous milestones in 2019, but as coronavirus creeped into the new year, coupled with one of the longest lockdowns the world has ever seen, music production for the crew came to an abrupt stop, especially for Joe Easy. He didn't release a single song that year and what makes his situation worse is he re-emerged into the spotlight in the worst way possible. You see, being a rapper from Regent Park came with a price, especially in 2018. Not only was it the year Joe Easy made his musical debut, but it was the year beloved Regent Park rapper Smoke Dog was shot and killed by Driftwood Court-based rapper 21 Neat. The incident sparked a now six-year-long gang war between multiple blocks across Toronto. From the infamous Driftwood Crips. Yo, we're from Driftwood. We're not from Regent Park, man. Get out of here. We'll pack you. To Jumbles Go Get M Gang. Bro, it's Paperboy. All that beacon on the net. 
Nah, I thought Boss you was a thug. Boss is on too. We all here. We all here. Icy. Regent Park affiliates became enemy number one to a number of notoriously violent crews across the Screwface capital, and Joe Easy was no exception to their wrath. You guys, I don't. All right, don't, don't say a word. I'm, you, you, you personally come get it. I'm gonna give it to you personally. Don't send no this is man to man shit. Nah, you think I'm fried? Fried? What are you talking about, fam? I wouldn't I'm have called you, shorty. fam. If you wanna give it back? I have a shorty. Fam, I wouldn't have called you, fam. What, like, what do you mean, fried? Come on, talk to me in some respect, fam. Talking to you with respect, bro. You're moving like a, you're moving like I didn't see you in the mall last time too, right? Same you, shit. You saw me in the mall where? You know, you, I seen you at your deal with mm, your shorty, right? Expense. Oh, How much you pay for the piece? Yo, I didn't pay for no piece. You never bought that chain? What are you talking about? Am I gifted to you or what? Like, yeah, what? I got that shit from the states from my crony over there. So I don't pay for chains and shit. I didn't pay for that. But all I want. Let me know if I could go send a bitch or go get her or not, man. On January 2nd, 2021, a video surfaced showing a recorded phone call between Joe Easy and Go Get Them Gang affiliate, Money Boy. During the call, the two seemed to be discussing a way for them to meet up so Joe Easy could receive a chain he was robbed of. The chain belonged to his older brother, a widely respected member of the Regent Park community known as DK. At the time, DK was incarcerated all the way in Thunder Bay, Ontario after being arrested during the city's largest fentanyl bust. Thunder Bay police noted DK was suspected of fueling trap houses across the city. They further added, DK along with two other individuals were in possession of approximately $150,000 in cash, one handgun, and $400,000 worth of drug paraphernalia. Prior to his arrest, DK handed over his chain to Joe Easy thinking it would be in good hands, but he was sadly mistaken. Joe Easy was later set up by a girl affiliated with the Go Get Them gang, who in turn robbed him of the chain. A few days after the phone call was leaked, Go Get Them Gang's front man, Top 5, would go live on Instagram wearing the chain. Throughout the live stream, Top 5 would play the recorded call while mocking Joe Easy, even going as far as threatening to flush the chain down the toilet. Yo, 5, you should have flushed that in his face. What are you doing? <laughs> You're not serious. You're not serious. No, we're going to the jeweler. We have to see if it's true or fake. Yeah, you shall flush that stuff. Flush it, flush it. Eight to shit on it. <laughs> if you're a bot bot, flush it right now. Flush that. When a real like, when a real like me joins the rap game, it's over. Nobody wins when GGG's in this rap game. We take chains, we make your main shooters run. Moments later, Lil Barrett joined the live stream and things quickly escalated. <laughs> They're not stop, skipping about a lot stop of things. Making, stop making bat <laughs> bitches back door. Um, come on, cuz. Boop! I don't, even want, I don't even want to say no hot shit. I don't even want to say no hot shit, but you're good. You guys what are good. What do you ever bun? You guys are good? I'm good. Are you good? Are you, are you good? Is MJ good? Is I'm it good? Jordan. Is it good? My are good. We here. Okay. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. We're here. Good I'm not. Tell me, you're not Stop even my your mom. I'm gonna smack the shit out of you. That's what I'm gonna do. I will blow you don't even it. deserve to die, you bitch kid. Blow your you don't even deserve to die. Cameras you and everything. Deserve, you're such a bitch. Look at you, fat kid. A bitch that got your Look chain. Glock you. got a search like Nintendo. Got a wife for the lows like Mentos. Joe Easy refused to be humiliated by his ops because less than two weeks after the live stream aired, he dropped a diss track featuring Paperboy. The upbeat profanity-laced song was titled Bra 5, a reference to the highly publicized leaked video of Top 5, who was caught on camera dancing around in a bra. From comparing Top 5 to infamous rapper turned federal informant 6ix9ine, to dissing the GG's frontman's fallen brother Foolish, Joe Easy didn't hold back in the slightest. No legs, we aim for beanies. Real G's don't rate no GG's. Now your bro, daddy lying on his name. Don't be foolish, man. You know he got some aim. Hey, you know I rap for my brother's chain. How the fuck you bro that you ain't give a flame? Haha. <laughs> Easy when you're in the streets, he can't do the top live. Bitch ass nigga don't even talk to me, bro. Five. Joe Easy and the Go Get Them Gang affiliates would go back and forth throughout the next few weeks until DK was released on bail on January 21st, 2021. With his older brother home, Joe Easy's focus shifted back to making music as he made his return to the scene with his new single, Active. Although the track broke 155,000 views, this would be the last time his song surpassed the 100k mark.
In fact, he released just two more songs after Active, both of which struggled to earn even 20,000 views. At this point, DK noticed his brother's once promising rap career rapidly declining, and with one of his bail conditions restricting him from speaking with Joe Easy, there was only so much he could do. He tried reaching out to major blog pages, asking them to promote Joe Easy's music, while his father would post his songs on his own social media accounts, both to little avail. Seeing how they went out of their way to make sure one of their own was straight, truly shows how supportive of each other the Convalo family really were, which makes what happens next so much more sinister. Tuesday, March 12th. 2024, at around 11 in the morning, Joe Easy would post a series of cryptic messages to his Instagram story, aimed at his younger brother and aspiring rapper, Northside05. The first post said, Oh b I'm not one of these b ass ass kids. Goof ass kids who never put in pain a day in their life. Kidnap victim ass kids in the streets, come online trying to put on a fake persona for b****s. Seen the video of his getting back by my blooder, went and cried real tears, hashtag gang, hashtag high five, wiped it and went Goku on the net talking crazy, told me come bang out for you cause your girl got put in back as, porn style, you goof, never stood on anything he said though, most of these out here really bitch, getting ransomed by their friends, seen them and shook hands and popped bottles, what are you standing on, oh shit, that's my unreleased bar, now you standing on business, project boy, saying belt, 100 more lines. My Ute, you're a box thief trying to steal my sauce. Tape cover, Roly, my ring, all in his last video. Mad about these and trying to come for me? Mad cause they're called them big and wanna suck my nuts. I was in the next room, you're big. Crying real tears when Pops called me a demon a couple months ago. Gave him a pat on the back, said go upstairs and pray. He looked at me and started laughing. You are a baby. Borrowing silver moissanite Cuban chains. Fake chain. Post close-ups of your MJ chain that's tuning green. MJ turning in his grave trying to look bigger than me. My Ute, you are tiny. Stealing my cover art, wanna be me identity thief. You cried real tears saying I don't rate you because I didn't send you unreleased. I said now nah because you're gonna steal my shit. Built for net banging. Don't make me end your career early and post your fire videos and pictures from your old spam part too. Rocking my shit, fronting for the gram. Posting on my birthday trying to get some recognition. All of a sudden you reply to all your comments. You a bitch ass ho, trying to flex on a bitch with the birthday gift she got me. Saying in tracks you real, every clothes you rock you bought. Real ho, put my shoes back in the room kid. Took little guy to eat and had to pull over three times for him to potty. How you not potty trained at your grown age? You in this shit for the wrong reasons and wrong intentions. Bruh bruh told me, let me find out he can't hold his pee. I was disappointed. I know for a fact broski helps pay for your sessions, fronts for you, steal my shit and drop before me, and my watch and clothes, plus your s sounds like six helping hands. These rappers they really rappers, if the shoe fits, wear it, it doesn't even fit, you took out the insole and got a squeeze. Post the inside of your shoes kid, man lost my insole to my thousand dollar kicks. Change what I rap about, let me drop trap boy this week, project boy, pipe it up, gotta eat, 1516 talking that shit. Real bars to bend my vibe, you weren't ever like this, hashtag freestyle king. Doing the most to fit in, I don't fit in, I stand out and really stand on business. You off this, you look like the wannabe Joe Easy, off brand Doovy. Joe Easy then posted a picture frame of Paperboy, who was shot just days prior to the following incident. He captioned the flick with, you good right broski? Right after this, he posted a near identical picture frame, this time belonging to Northside 05. Joe Easy captioned it, he got the new one with lights now, biter. Then came the ninth and final post. Don't risk my life to flex for likes. Ironic, considering what would unfold mere hours later. At approximately 1.28 p.m. that same day, Joe Easy's mother would come running out of her townhouse unit on Arnold Avenue, screaming at the top of her lungs for someone to call the police. Neighbors heard the commotion and quickly alerted the authorities who arrived to a gruesome scene shortly after. Officers found DK, his father John Combolo, and his mother, all suffering from gunshot wounds. They also located a one-year-old child inside the townhouse unit. Fortunately, she was left unharmed. DK, 
who was found lying several meters away from his home on the corner of Parliament and Dundas Street, seemed to have suffered the brunt of the attack and was provided with immediate life-saving measures, but it wasn't enough. He was pronounced dead at the scene. His father, John Congolo, was found in the townhouse unit, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to the face. He died from his injuries at the hospital a few hours later. They were Toronto's 14th and 15th murder victims of 2024. DK's mother was grazed in the head by a bullet and was rushed to the hospital. Miraculously, she made a full recovery and was released by the end of the day. Back at the scene, officers located a suspect and engaged in a foot pursuit. The brief pursuit ended in an altercation that injured two officers, leaving one wounded in the arm and the other injured in both of his legs. Toronto police refused to provide further details regarding the extent of their injuries, but the officer with the arm injury was admitted to the hospital and released by the end of the day, while the officer with the leg injuries underwent emergency surgery and is currently recovering. A firearm was recovered at the scene and the suspect, later identified as Joe Easy, was subsequently captured on Sackville Street and taken into custody. Videos of the horrific attack and its gruesome aftermath began circulating on Reddit not even an hour after Joe Easy's arrest. One video showed John Congolo being taken away in a stretcher with his face completely disfigured, while another video shows the moment DK makes a run for it, with Joe Easy following a few feet behind. As the person recording shouts, Yo, this guy's shooting the fucking guy. You can see DK tripping over a curb and stumble to the ground, allowing Joe Easy to catch up and gun him down. With how uncommon familicides are in Canada, the incident sent shockwaves throughout the country. Some attributed the attack to a manic episode, while many had absolutely no sympathy for the rapper, especially his ops. First, WASP gang affiliate Jay Neat posted a photo of Itachi to his Instagram story with the message, Bro tried to wipe out his own clan. For those who don't know, Itachi is a character off the popular anime, Naruto. One of the most iconic scenes off the show is dubbed the Uchiha clan massacre, where Itachi killed his entire clan in a single night, but spared his younger brother, Sasuke. Now this was nothing compared to what the currently incarcerated top 5 had to say. He posted a photo of himself wearing the late DK's chain and captioned it, didn't have energy when we took his chain, but wants to kill his whole family, hashtag not cool. He further added, if we are going to make Toronto great again, we are gonna have to do something about Regent Park, something is in the water. Then he tagged Regent Park based folk singer Mustafa the poet and told him, we need to get on a call ASAP because this is getting out of hand. Mustafa didn't waste any time responding to top five. He wrote back, I haven't entertained your act in years, but I have a moment today. You are one of the most pathetic people this city has ever produced. And now that the audience is slipping away, what are you going to do with this performance of Gangster? After all these years, we still don't believe you, little nigga. When we see our dead brothers again, what will you show yours? Look at how you carry his name, foolish, in vain. You speak more about other dead than your own. You won't use your hands to bust a gun. At least put it up to pray for all that you lost, including your own life. Keep screaming into the void. It's what you do best. Damn! Not being the one to back down from an argument, Top 5 clapped back by saying, Who are you today? An imam, activist, hitter, or a poet? What's pathetic is your friend killing his whole family. Then he cut a little deeper by mentioning his late brother. You want to talk about my bro, but didn't your bro die over a half a Casamigos bottle? Go cry for him. The morning after his arrest, Joe Easy appeared briefly in a North York courtroom by video. He entered the video room wearing white coveralls provided by police. Swaying from foot to foot, breathing heavily at times and staring wide-eyed towards the floor, Joe Easy did not respond when a justice of the peace asked him to identify himself for the court. He's been like this with us all morning, an officer off-screen told the court. As of the making of this video, Joe Easy's current condition is unknown and his trial has yet to begin. A GoFundMe has been set up to aid the surviving members of the Convalo family, the link will be in the description.